Hey friends, in today's video, you'll see an example of what happens on your first service call. You see, you go to school for a couple of months, you learn the basics, the fundamentals, then you go on that call and you forget it all. You forget what you just learned at school. Maybe the customer is there staring at you. Uh, maybe you're aware that you're working on someone else's property on someone else's HVAC system and you get nervous and you forget it all. But in today's video, you'll see how just going back to the basics, the fundamentals will help you on your next service call. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, so this is Eric. Uh, he's been here now almost uh, six months and I gave him a service call on this package unit. Um, now you might be thinking that, hey, um, Eric and I had an understanding before the video. He knows what service call Armando gave me. Eric, do you know what service call I gave Absolutely you? Absolutely no, man. I you don't, right? Yeah, you're, he's clueless, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be uh, right behind him recording him to see what steps uh, he does. And, and I'm gonna help him too. So like that, it helps you guys, the viewers, as to what to do when you're troubleshooting a system. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the phone here and I'm gonna be recording him. So, all right, Eric, so let's go ahead and, you know, whenever we go to, whenever there's been a war, you, you gotta get your weapon, right? Yeah, so you, is, you, need, you need your weapon, right? You need a sword. So we got our meter. And so then, and you don't know how many times that, Rick, it's happened where they tell you it's this unit. And look, like this one, we have three units, but um, you're working on the wrong unit when all along it was this unit. So it's always important, guys, to make sure you're working on the right unit yeah. too. A lot of the times it's labeled, but you know, you know how that goes. That gets scratched off and you're not in the right unit. But let's go ahead and start, um, Eric. So we got a package unit. The, the, so the issue is we have a call for heating, but as you can see, the system is not on. So let's go ahead and just start off with, with the first step. So let's make sure we have power. So let's go ahead and, and turn that off, okay? Let's go ahead and open that disconnect and I'm gonna have you check for, uh, for power and then we'll just go ahead and, and open it here, okay? So we got power in and then power out. So if, Let's see if I'm following this correctly. This is okay. So we're going to check power in, which is the top two right there. So let's go top ahead and two. check. Yep. Those two. And then just make sure, uh, be careful not to touch those, right? If you guys are out there, don't touch those metal lugs, use the meter to touch those. So let's have it on, on volts too, right? Good job. Sure. Have it on VAC. So I'll hold this for, for Eric. And we got power. We do yep, we yep. got power coming in. Yes, and then let's check the bottom ones. Obviously, we're not gonna have power coming out because um, we had the disconnects off. Yeah. Now, one thing that I like to do too, you check one leg to ground just to make sure we have uh, voltage. So you put one one there and one to ground on that one on top. And you could green touch that green that ground lug all the way in the back there. Just to confirm, oh, yeah. right? You see, you got 120. Now let's check it to line two. That one in line two. Okay, good. Yeah. So this is what we're gonna do. So we're, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it on. And of course, this is, I'm, I'm right here supervising because we wanna make sure we don't get hurt. So on the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and check. And this is where, where it's important to do the line one with ground. But right now, line one, line two, we got 20, 211, 208. A lot of the times they bypass that fuse. So um, by turning this disconnect off, um, if they bypass that, you won't read 208, but you'll read 120 from one leg to the gr to ground. So just be, be careful with that. But let's just go from confirm. We have with, from one line to ground, we have 120 to ground. Good. And then the other, the other uh, line two now to ground. Okay, we got power. Awesome. So we're gonna leave it on the on position. I'm gonna give you the, the sword, the tool back. Um, if you didn't have power or you would, would not uh, having power on, right? Power is off and you check the fuses and, and they're not reading continuity. Then you have another issue go, um, happening. A lot of the, a lot of the times um, the forks here can be a little bit loose. So it can overheat and it'll cause the, um, the fuse to go bad. Um, but in a lot of cases, it could be a bad compressor, uh, uh, something that takes, uh, that pulls a lot of current. It could have, uh, it could blow that or it could cause the fuse to go bad. So 
Let's go ahead and open the compartment here, the electrical uh, compartment. So usually you have two screws right there. Okay. So usually they're 5 16 So um, so this is the issue. The issue is we do not have a call. We don't have heating, even though we have a call for heating, but it's not on. Now this is a heat pump. Right, this is a specifically a carrier unit. So um, I will say this, um, Eric, because we're not working with the ream, rod, or bar unit. If we want to activate the um, the cooling, the, the reversing valve needs to receive 24 volts. Correct. That's as far as I will go in giving you <laughs> clues. But let's go ahead, right? So we have our thermostat wire coming in here, right? So let's go ahead and pull that out a little bit more. And guys, we did not rehearse this at all. I promise you. So everything's pretty much raw. So we'll see what happens. So, uh, so we got our wires here. So what wires do we have here, uh, Eric? We have. Um, let me see. We have. Where is it? So we got our our cooling, cooling. our power. All right, that orange one, right? That one goes to the uh, reversing valve. Reversing valve, yeah. Right. So you guys can see right there. But the issue is, and just keeping it simple, right? I'm not going to be checking the control board. I'm not going to be checking the contactor and all that. We're going to check the control side, okay? So between R and C, right? That's that's going to be what? R and C? 24. 24 volts. That's going to be power, right? Correct. For the thermostat. Yes. Um, so um, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and I'll uh, have you do that. Take the wire nuts out. Okay. So we're just exposing the, the copper, right? Um, a lot of the times the package units, you have um, the thermostat wires and then you have the wires coming out from the package unit and you have to actually wire nut it. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna help out uh, Eric by holding this up. So let's go ahead and uh, check between, um, so our power, right? So we wanna make sure our thermostat is, is receiving power. So you guys see there's 27 volts. So yep. Our thermostat's getting power, okay? So once again, the issue is, the issue is, is that we have a call for heating, but the system's not on. So, like I said, we're gonna keep it simple, right? So, if we had a call, if we had a call for, for heating, and this is a heat pump, um, what do you think our voltage would be between R and Y, Eric? If, if we have a call for heating, right? If we have a call 24. for heating. So, between common and the yellow one, that one would be 24 volts. Yeah. But if R and Y already closed the bridge, right, it would be zero, zero volts, right? Yeah. So what we can do here, um, oh, and the fuse popped right now. And this is okay. And like, this wasn't planned. I'm going to be honest. This was not planned at all. So I'm thinking this hot touched the, the, the fuse. Yeah. So I uh, the, the metal. So um, that common, no, this is this happens a lot, and that's okay. Th this wasn't planned, but the um, the common here is grounded to the whole package unit. So my whole package unit is common. So if that right there, my hot touches metal, there goes the uh, there goes that fuse. So unfortunately, I do not have another fuse. So we're just gonna pause the video temporarily, and I will be back with another fuse. So you can see it right there, right? It's popped. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, I'm a little bit out of breath. I had to go get the some fuses. So uh, so first we have to make sure this hot there. It's not touching the, the metal because the common is grounded to the actual housing. So everything's common, if you want to say it that way. So I think that's what happened, Eric. So let's go ahead and get a fuse. And then uh, now power is on, but I can almost guarantee that that was the issue. So we'll go ahead and, and put it there. So you know what, just to play it safe though, we'll turn it off. Okay. okay. Always be safe. And we'll put it right there on the, uh, the fuse section, right? Okay, so I got a three amp fuse, good. We got a good one. So let's see. Let's turn it on. Let's see if that pops. 
Oh, okay. We're good. It didn't pop. No, it didn't pop. No. Okay, okay. So we're good now. Okay, so let's go back. Finally, back to square one. <laughs> so, um, so power, right? That's 24 volts. That's always going to power, right? R and C. It's yeah, always going to be 24 volts. So this is a heat pump. So what should my voltage be between R and my Y? If, if I'm calling for it, right? If, if I'm calling. calling for cooling. Yeah, or in this case, it is a heat pump. So okay. um, I'll say this, Eric. This just turns on the contactor and it gets the, the, the compressor churning. Okay. And so it's heating, but to call for cooling, you need to send 24 volts to the reversing valve. Reversing. So with this specific unit, which is which is care about sending 24 volts to my my yellow one, yellow which is one, yeah. not so much cooling, it's more just for the to turn on the compressor. So what should my voltage be if I am sending a a call for heating to my yellow wire? If I am, if I'm calling for it, the bridge is close. Mm -hmm. What should my voltage be if the thermostat's calling for it? What do you think? If the thermostat is calling for it, yep, it's what, calling for what it. What should your heating be? Uh, what should my voltage be between R, R and, and and the um the action? And the action. Why? Yeah, why? What should it Zero. be? Zero volts. Yes. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah, no, no worries, man. I'm not only only a couple of people will see this video. So <laughs> no, good job. Good job. So this is the key right here, okay? Well, remember we have, to, we have to use our weapon. So let's check between power and 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 the Y. And let's go ahead and go over here. 27, 27 volts what do you know so okay. at this at this point though eric are we gonna go and start checking the board checking the contactor no are we gonna start going crazy swapping out the compressor no 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 <laughs> charging the, the the customer no i mean we haven't fixed it yet we just know that we're getting 24 volts between the power and 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 the yellow wire the action yes. which in, in this case is going to turn on heating yeah so what do you think it's, it's going on here, Eric. What do you think? And it's fine. You I can think, just guess. What I do think you think? Something's wrong with the thermostat. Something's wrong with the thermostat. Okay. And guys, I, like I said, I have not gone over this with Eric. I'm just, it's just a raw video. So you're saying thermostat. Okay. Yes. If it is a thermostat though, okay? Because remember, I called for heating, right? Yes. Well, maybe, right? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I did or not. What, um, what can you do here? Right, before going, you know, of course, you would go to the thermostat because that's where the customer checks. But up here, what can you do just to confirm that theory? Up here. Up here. What can you do? Because remember, a thermostat is just a switch. So what yeah. can you do with those two? With these two? Yeah, those two. What, what can you do to see if it is a thermostat? What, what, what can you do? Oh, jumper. You would jump it. All right. Well, let's let's find out. If you jump it, it should, it and should it turn works, on. it should turn on. All right. So. Hey. What do you know? So this is uh, it's turning on. You can hear the compressor turn on. Right? Now, I do have the, the return and supply panels. They're, they're closed off, but it turned on. But... All I did, Eric, and um, and guys, and, and this is uh, just so you guys, you guys can see, oh. Eric. <laughs> all I did, which is not call, not turn on the thermostat at all. Meaning there was power, but I didn't call for heating. I didn't do anything to it. I left it in the off position. So between R and my 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 yellow wire, my Y one, yes. it was twenty four volts. There's a potential. All we had to do is just jump it. So that um, we can actually pinpoint that it was, there was no call for heating and the issue was down there, not down up there, here, not up here yeah. right? So yeah. it kind of gives you an idea, Eric, that a lot of the times it's the easiest things to do. Thermostats do go bad. Thermostats do, uh, wired do, do go bad as well. But just, it's easy to go into the board and start going, you know, ohms law, transformers, flux mm. capacitor. I think some of the guys call it that. But checking your capacitor and all this. It was just, I was simply not calling for it. Mm. So, um, as you guys can see, it's always starting with the easy things first. Work, work with the easy thing and then work your way up. And doing that, that will help you and maybe saving time and money and maybe frustration. Work with the easy things.
So this is one of many videos that I'll be doing, service calls with some of the students. I hope you uh, benefited from today's video, and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for having me. Anytime, Eric. Thank you for being here. See you, everyone. See you, guys.